I was raking about in uh, some of the stuff I've still got in Glasgow, and I discovered these lights that were sort of prototypes, and uh, they are basically, they're, I can't even remember when I made these, I'm hoping I've got, I've got a date in these. Oh, I do, I can see it. it, says 2004. So that's 12 years ago I made these, and basically speaking, they're LED light panels that uh, have resistive droppers, very, very simple. So I'll draw the circuit diagram out, and then we'll open them and take a wee look inside. So the circuit diagram is incredibly simple. Live and neutral, the mains, they come in, and they go to a bridge rect far straight into the bridge rect far of based on these uh, based on these on discrete diodes. So that's the AC in plus and minus, that's the, the output. And one of them uses just really big chunky resistors, three in the series, power resistors, so I'll draw smoke above them. Uh, and then just a string of LEDs. So how many LEDs? Because I haven't actually counted it. Which one? This is the one you can see the three power resistors, or maybe you can see three power resistors in the back, and the four diodes. But this one has one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's got 60 LEDs, giving a combined forward voltage for the LEDs about 180 volts. So that means that uh, just a rough RMS value. Uh, so that's about 60 LEDs. Uh, which means that the combined vo for a voltage about 180 volts, which leaves about 60 volts to drop across the resistors, 20 volts each. So they're, you know, given the current, because it's obvious they're running at a modest current, they do get very hot because uh, it doesn't take much to make a resistor hot. The other approach I used uh, experimentally was to have the redirect fire output and uh, intersperse the resistors with the LEDs which I'm not sure it's bad enough that they get hot as it is, but uh, this got even hotter. The, the panel, the circuit board with the LEDs was dissipating all the heat, and I thought, you know, spreading it across as a large series of uh, um, resistors would actually keep that down, but uh, it didn't really do that. So let's uh, open one. I should say this one is uh, ultraviolet LEDs. Well, kind of ultraviolet LEDs. They're kind of, they certainly make ultraviolet stuff light up. I think they're ultraviolet LEDs. This is definitely blue, and uh, this one, well, you can see it's green. I'm going to push those out of the way at the moment because they're just a wee bit garish. So let's open this one up. The cases were standard. I think they're made in Canada. Uh, Hammond cases, the sort of plastic, um, coloured plastic, clear cases. Quite a nice case, actually. And they've obviously got M3 screw inserts because that's uh, what I'm... Uh, used to standard M3 screws, not the ones that came with the case. This one, I noticed that in this style, I've actually got a, a cable strain relief grommet, whereas the other ones, it's going straight onto the circuit board. So this one... is using the bridge rectifier. It's got a, a resistor in series probably as a sort of crude fuse. Uh, it's got the bridge rect far and then it's got the series of resistors across the back. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what current this was actually running the LEDs at. I suppose there's one way to find out and that's to power it up and then footer about with a probe on it. This could go horribly wrong. Let's uh, plug that one in. Let's unplug another. Plug this one in. Uh, get this dinky little meter. Uh, some of you are asking about this tiny meter. It is just a random meter I saw and thought it was quite cute. Uh, it's called an eagle meter and it's basically just the generic standard meter but scaled down. And you have to open it up to change the batteries, well, as you have to do the other ones. And it's uh, lithium cells inside it. I think it's a stack of two or three twos. So let's turn this, uh, one of the advantages of these meters is that they have the, you can just select the uh, current range on without moving the leads and that's also a major disadvantage. I'm going to cover these meters at some point. I've got a pile of them to actually, awaiting for the for coverage. So I'm going to pick a random LED and I'm just going to short it out. Oh, that's possibly quite a high current. I'm running these at. Oh yeah, I was going for the full 20 milliamps. Wow. 
Yeah, no wonder those resistors get hot because the whole panel does get quite warm. I should mention that uh, I made one of these panels for my brother, uh, Ralphie, because uh, Ralphie is to trade. He's an undertaker and, uh, well, lifting coffins all day took its toll on his uh, arms and back. So um, he, you know you get that sort of heat therapy thing, this sort of uh, deep red light that's supposed to be healing. Well, I tried making one of them just basically using this arrangement, but loaded up entirely with the deep red, the 660 nanometer red LEDs. And that meant the resistors provided the warmth because this does get pretty hot, this panel. Um, and the LEDs provided the light. Uh, so it kind of worked quite well for that application. Uh, I'm not sure if that was how, you know, this. I did it because I already had these based on, on you know, experiments with just the coloured LEDs, or if it's vice versa, maybe it's that that inspired me to do it, uh, to make uh, these instead. So uh, I'm going to uh, unplug this one. Uh, I'll unplug that one then, and I'll pop this one open as well. This is a journey for, of discovery for me as well because uh, it's so long since I made these. I also made another version which uh, had... It was based in the lid of one of these boxes and with everything really low profile, but I had to drill ventilation holes on the front of the circuit board, I think, to try and let the, the heat out. Um, I also considered just mounting the resistors in between the LEDs on the basis that, you know, then, you know, they're out of reach, but they would still mean live connections in the front, so it's not that ideal. I wonder uh, which package I designed this on. So the it's got three 1K resistors, brown, black, red, one zero and two zeros. Very high power resistors, and uh, in this case it's got uh, the... Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was the ten LED ver. That was the sixty LED version. So, yeah, each one's dropping about twenty volts. Yeah, twenty milliamps. That just works out nicely, doesn't it, with one K, and and an RMS voltage of two forty. So, um, yeah, this is kind of neat. Uh, but they do get very, very hot, like burny, burny hot. I mean, resistors are supposed to run hot, but you know what? Even though, well, what is the power dissipation of these? Um, calculator. Where's the calculator? There's a calculator. So roughly 20 milliamps. There's that. There's that. Th this is the same calculator, the solar calculator that, that I already had an issue with, with uh, the fact that it... Uh, it wasn't a happy bun bun owing to the fact it hadn't been exposed to sunlight. Right, okay, let's forget that then. Right, uh, that's a little bit of math for you guys. It's uh, 20 volts times 20 milliamps. It's about, it's about half a watt, isn't it? And these are, I think they're two watt resistors, so they're a quarter of their rating effectively, but you know, they still, well, half a watt is half a watt. That's quite hot. Um, so, yeah, they're kind of neat. I just found them in a drawer and just thought they were quite interesting and uh, I thought I'd dig them out. I just, because uh, these consume so little power, let's see, uh, about four or five watts each. I just left uh, left these running to test LEDs at the time. and I labelled some of the back of them with the LED which uh, supplier off eBay I'd got them from. In this case, it's BHK, Best Hong Kong. I'm not sure if they're still about. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's quite a simple circuit. It's quite a nice little circuit. One improvement would have been to actually move these... Uh, actually, I'm just looking at this and thinking, were they just sat on the surface and soldered? That must have been time consuming. I don't know if the, I put the leads through and then clipped them on this side, but I think I was trying to keep the mains connections off completely. But, uh, one improvement would have been, and I'm sure I did it, is just to actually put the diodes on... Uh, the circuit board as well in these days, you know, or just you just use surface mount components in the back. They're so much more readily available now. But yeah, it's an interesting thing. It's another discovery in the vaults of time.